Hello and welcome to this video. In the previous video, we looked at how we can connect Business Central to Microsoft Dataverse using virtual tables. We also took a short look at the difference between a Canvas app and a model-driven app. In this video, we're going to look at how we can build a very simple model-driven app on top of our data model in Dataverse. In this example, I've been using a custom-made Business Central extension, which you get the link to the source code in the description below. You can also find a link to my blog post about the same topic in the description below. So without further ado, let's just get started. Okay, so the first thing we have to do is, of course, we have to go to our tables to get into our Dataverse. Let's go to All, and we need to go to our Business Central Available Tables here. And let's press these additional rows. And if we scroll down, let's see, I have these tables. I got my superhero, superhero line, super power, weapons. And actually, I have two superhero lines, but you have to see. Uh, don't concern yourself about this one. This is an old version. As you can see, this is version 1.0. These are version 2.0. Of course, this emphasizes the importance of keeping everything with versions and keeps because once we start making different versions here, as I also said in the late, in the last video, we have we make kind of a contract saying that this version will always work. So actually, I broke my own pattern here because this one does not work. Now, a good tip here is. Of course, you mark them as visible. Once they're marked as visible, they will be in Dataverse. But a good tip here is to also always have this column called Refresh. Now, the idea behind the Refresh column is that if I make any changes to my Business Central API pages, I can over here mark this, and it will automatically recreate my table based on the new schema for my API pages. So it's a good column to always have uh, available to you. Now, once we have marked the different tables, and it's a good idea to mark them once and then let it save, and then mark the next one to make sure that it saves between each one so you don't overload it. Anyway, let's go back and let's go back to our tables and remember to go to all. And here, if I now search for super. You can see I have my tables. Now, if I try to go to my, again, if, if you try to look here, I have two superhero lines. But if I try to go to the one that I'm actually using, my superhero line here, the first thing I did was I renamed my table to make it uh, more, so it doesn't have that API thing behind it. And you do that by go to properties. And then you have your display name up here. As you can see, it still has the same external name, which is my Superlines BC behind the scenes. The next thing we can do is we go to relationships. And here you will see a list of the different relationships that I have set up inside my API page using page parts. And one thing I learned here was that it has to be a good that is connecting the different tables behind the scenes. So while in Business Central, we can have natural keys, you know, a document number and line numbers and so on. But days of us to actually make things work, you need to have a good to connect them. I also ran into a problem that for some reason, it's, it got my superhero ID and it got my weapon ID, but my power ID just never showed up. So I had to manually create it. To create it, I went into my columns here. And I went into new column. I gave it a name, and then I said that it was a lookup, and that it was related. It had a table relation to my super power here. And once that, and it was important, of course, down here also to external name to make it the same name as it is in your API page, because as I said, it's actually. This field was in my API page, but for some reason, Dataverse did not recognize it. But if you gave it the same name here, 
and you saved it, it would find the field and it would add it as a table relation. And table relation is, of course, as you can see here, it shows the value. So even though behind the scenes here, this is actually a good, a good, as you can see, it actually finds the value from the table itself showing. Uh, so it's like a lookup field, like you know from Business Central, like a flow field. Um, the good thing, or the great thing about uh, working with a model-driven app and working database is you have two ways of actually building your user interface. You can either do it directly inside your Power App, which means you will make it different from time to time, or we over here have some views and forms that we can set directly upon our table itself, which means that anyone who uses our table in their application, in the app, they will automatically be able to use the forms and views that we have created for them to make a more coherent experience across the platform. So we're trying to go to views. You see you have a couple of default views here. And you can also create your own view. Now I have just been using these default views, so I'll try to go in here to my all superheroes lines. And I've added the fields that I wanted to display when people want to see the superhero lines. I could also add more fields by dragging and dropping them onto here or pressing the new column and choosing them. So that's basically it for the views. And the same goes for our forms. So as you can see, we have some uh, a card, a main, and a click view, quick view. We're going to try to go to the main card, or the main form. It's the same. We can drag and drop the fields that we wish the people to be able to fill in when they're using our app. Up here, we have something called related. Now, I don't have anything related on this, but if we try in a moment, hit to our superhero, which is uh, like our card or our header, you will, you will see that related actually has some to choose from. So let's go back here, let's go back to our tables. And again, remember to go to all, otherwise we won't find our tables. We go to super and superhero. Now one thing you might also notice is that I have a heart here as my icon. And that's actually something that you can set up as a property here on your table. I have just used a standard uh, one I can pick from. They have a lot of different icons you can choose from here, or you can upload your own. The, the, the where we're going to be using this is actually when we're creating the app. And, and I'll show you when we get to it. Just keep in mind that you can actually do this. You can actually make icons for your tables. Now, if we try to again to go to forms, we go to our main form. As you can see, I have created a main form here. Out of the box, it would only have the one field up here called name. I added these different ones. And also, I've created a layout using two columns. So when you click here, you can choose what kind of layout you want. One column, two columns, or three columns. And also, here in related, as you can see, we've got the lines. Now the lines, of course, is our superhero lines, because that's our table relation. Also over here, I have added a subgrid. To add a subgrid, all we do is we get to the components. And here we have something called a subgrid. And if you don't see it here, you can go down into grid and subgrid. When you add your subgrid, you just drag and drop it. And then you can say show related. And it automatically say, OK, I know superheroes are related to this one. So you can choose it. And if you choose which kind of view, you want to use the default view, which we created inside our superhero lines, or we can create a new view. Yeah. Oh, I didn't mean to save that. So, so that's it. So just keep in mind, 
that we can create a lot of all of this up front. This means that once we do all of this and everything here is set up, it's actually quite simple to create our Power App itself. So let's try to do that. We go to solutions, and it's always a good idea to create a new solution. As you can see, I have a couple of solutions here, but if I want to create a new one, I say new solution, and I call it Super Hero Model. I select the publisher. You can either use it on the default, or I have my own here. And we press create. And we have given a, a blank solution. Our solution is a, is a way to organize our code. So we can actually also put our tables inside the solutions, which means that once we deploy or publish this to somewhere else, it will also take our tables with us. We're not going to do that in this one. We're just going to keep it simple. So let's say an app. And here we have the ability to create a canvas app, model driven app, or a page. And we want a model driven app, so we choose the model driven app. Give it a name. Superhero on the advanced. You can see we can do some custom components if you want. Description, I'm not going to use. We press create. And we are given a blank um, app here. So let's say we want to add some pages. And here we have the ability to create, to add pages from different uh, sources. We have all our data in Dataverse, so that's what we want to use. So let's say Dataverse. And here, let's say we want to add our superhero, uh, superpower, weapon, and superhero. We don't want to add our lines because, of course, Alliance is part of our superhero, so we should never access the lines directly. And then we have this down here called Show Navigation, which will automatically create a menu for us. So let's just press Add. And as you can see, we're actually already up and running now. The only thing is, of course, I would like my superhero here to be up buff. So what I do is I go over here and say I want to move this one up. And it gives us the, the list view that is the view we create inside our database. So it's already out of the box ready for us. And out of the box, it also gives us the ability up here for some new uh, features and visualize and stuff. I also have the ability to export to Excel and import to Excel. All of this is already given to us without having to do anything. If we then try to navigate inside here, you'll see it also uses our main view. So I have my superhero over here, and I have my lines over here, and also I have the ability up here to say lines, which again gives me the view of the lines. And pretty much that's how simple it is. So if we try to publish this, Let's try to play it. You will see that the hard icon that I talked about earlier is already displayed over here as an icon. So again, when building a model learn app, it's a good idea to actually give your different tables icons that are actually saying what it's being used for using uh, yeah, a great item. Otherwise, it will just show this puzzle piece, which is, yeah, it's fine, of course, but it's not really what you would like for a user experience. But yeah, that, that's pretty much it, because now I can, I can go in here and I can create a new one if I wanted to. I fill in the information, and once I press save, it will actually save it directly back to Business Central. 
and the same thing as something that's created in some piece of central it, it will automatically show, show up here so that's actually just a very simple model driven app on top of dataverse so most of the, the thing that you have to concern yourself about is doing all of the work or as much of the work up front inside dataverse because once it's there anyone can actually create a model driven app within very few minutes as you can see here now of course, there are different things you can do afterwards to make it more user experience and stuff, but that's not something that's outside the scope of this video. So let's just get back to the final thoughts. Now, in this video, we looked at how you can create a very simple model-driven app. Now, of course, you can do many more things with the model-driven apps than what we have seen in this video. This was just like a starting point. It was to show you just how simple we can get started, how easily it is to get started to create a model-driven app once all our data is inside Dataverse. And also to show you how, you, by doing all the work up front inside Dataverse, you can make a co coherent app that will always look the same and feel the same no matter who uses your tables around. So that was it. Thank you for watching. Stay safe and goodbye.